even though it's much harder to sand, I do not want to disturb this fibro light as it's curing and getting its bite on the steel. Unlike Bondo, fiberglass filler hardens into one solid sheet that's nearly unbreakable, whereas Bondo is kind of soft and you wiggle the surface without disturbing the adhesion. I'm back with the Astro Short Air File and you can direct your sanding with force on either end of the sander. In this case, I'm pushing more with the knob at the front than I am with the handle. I want to pre-feather the fibrol where it meets the metal before I work on the bulk of it in the middle. That way, if it's a little high out towards the edges, I don't have that making my tool rock into the center, making lower spots in the center that I don't want. I turn the sander around because it's easier to control the force with the knob than it is with the handle. I'm using 36 grit sandpaper, but it's still pretty tough to cut this fiberglass filler because it is like a rock. This is kind of like mixing the Bondo. You're going to be going over and over and over and over and over, sanding the same way, sanding the same direction, but never staying in one place for too long. I changed the angle of how I'm holding the sander and the way I'm moving it to keep from cutting in lines while I'm forming the, the shape that's supposed to be there. In this case, where the wheel flare meets the face of the fender. And this being so difficult to sand, it doesn't go down very quick, so you don't have to worry about you know, ruining it real quick because you're not even going to sand it very quick. It's going to take a whole lot of sanding to work it down. And this fiberglass filler is a rough end filler. And I'm not trying to establish absolute straightness or smoothness or pinhole free or any of that stuff. It's going to have pinholes and divots and all that in it. And that's where the Bondo comes in, which is the second stage of body fillers. And the final stage being the glaze. But let's not put the cart before the horse. Notice how I'm going round and round up here because there's a soft crown there from the top of the fender a few inches down. You can call that rocking and rolling over that crown. You can see that the motion I was using is matching the shape of the fender there, rolling it from the top where it slants in out to the bottom of the crown where it's meeting the flatter part of the fender. Now I'm going to hit it hard up near the crest of the fender at the very top. Once again, never staying in one place for too long at any given time. You want to blend it together, not try to take out one bad spot you find until it's gone. If you do that, you're going to cause a big mess. I'm going to speed this show up now so we can get towards the end where we're seeing the thing come together. Now that it's pretty close, I'm gonna dust it off real good and make some marks on it with my marker and see if it's pretty flat, which I already know that it is, but I'll give you guys the, the actual visual of where we're at, shaking my marker down so that the, it'll mark on this uh, 
filler. I'm just going to draw some lines around on it and that way we can uh, see that it's uh, straight. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, the marks are going away just like that because it's already straight. You can see there to the left where my stud welder pulls were in the little crease there at the front. Now I'm gonna give my little high spots a tap down. Now we're ready to move on to phase two, putting the Mondo on it. So please touch my like thingy and subscribe, damn it.